ever seen a stingray? Like maybe at the aquarium or in the zoo? They are fascinating creatures. Stingrays are what we're talking about today as we continue our unit on finding God under the sea. Hey Refuge Kids, it's me, your children's pastor, Mrs. Jill, Pastor Jill, Mrs. Williams, Pastor Williams, Jill, whatever you need to call me, I'm good with it. Hey, um, we're talking about stingrays today. If you've ever seen one, they're really incredible creatures. They're not like really any other fish in the sea. Actually, they're part of the shark family, which I didn't actually know. It's pretty interesting really though, because they don't have any fins. They don't have any flippers. They have big, wide, flat bodies. And when they wanna swim, they sort of like, flap and wiggle their bodies and it helps them move around. But also they're not usually this bright. They're usually like really brown and dark colored so that they can camouflage. Because even though they're a member of the shark family, they hunt and do things very, very differently than sharks do. They like sort of wiggle their bodies under the sand in the bottom of the um, ocean. And then when things come around them, they're camouflaged. You can't see them. And when fish and things come around them, they can grab onto them really fast. A lot of times they have these big long tails that might even have sharp pokers at the end that can be really deadly and dangerous but they're actually like super super peaceful animals when it comes to um, humans they don't hardly ever hurt humans the reason that we're talking about um, stingray today is because we're looking at the prophet Elijah and um, the prophet Elijah had a really really tough um, time in his life where he just felt like he wanted to run and hide and when he did you know, hide the way stingrays do. And when he did, God showed up in a really powerful way. So I'm actually going to read to you guys right now out of the book of First Kings in chapter 19 verses 1 to 18. Okay, try to stay with me here. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Now Ahab is kind of an evil king and his wife Jezebel and he wanted to worship other gods, gods that weren't real. And so they went out and they were killing all of God's prophets and they killed a lot of Elijah's friends. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like one of them. So she threatened Elijah to kill him. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. Who wouldn't be? When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. You know, Elijah had had sort of found a moment in his life when he was really, really done. He was really tired. His friends have all, had all died and somebody was threatening to kill him. And that's really, really dramatic. But a lot of us find times when we're just done. We're tired. We're tired of school at home. We're tired of working. We're overwhelmed and we're just tired and done. And he ran away and he hid. But you know what? God didn't give up on Elijah. He actually did something really awesome. Listen, all at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some baked bread over hot coals in a jar of water. He ate and drank and then he laid down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey's too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by the food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and he spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. This is one of my favorite passages in the whole Bible. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. That's tough. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. Check this out. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Where do you think the Lord was? And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. God wasn't in all of that loud banging earthquake. He's in everything, but he appeared to Elijah in a quiet, simple whisper. I love how he does that for us sometimes. 
Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Haziel king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu son of Nimshi king over Israel and anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Mehaloah to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Haziel and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. God had a big plan for Elijah, and Elijah was ready to give up. He was ready to quit. He was ready to die. He really actually wanted to die. All of his friends had died, and he hid under a bush, and he said, God, please just take me home. I don't want to live anymore. This is too much. Even as kids, I know as adults we get there, and even as kids we get there too. This is just too much. I don't want to do this anymore. It's too hard. And we might want to hide, and we might want to run. And you know what? Just like the stingray, God created the stingray to hide, but he didn't create us to hide. He created us to seek him. He created us to be strong, but he will provide that strength for us. When you feel like it's time to hide, when you need to run, when you're too upset or you're angry, your emotions get really big and you need a break and you just need to run away, it's okay. God will meet you where you are. He will not forsake you. He will not leave you. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in creation can separate us from the love of God. He is there for us even when we feel like we have nothing left to give. So when you have those moments and you need to hide, hide in the arms of God. Be in the refuge under God's wings because he'll never leave you. Check out the craft. I hope that you got your um, packages in the mail from me. You should have everything you need. Watch the video and do it with me. To begin making your stingray, take the paper plate included with your craft supplies, flip it upside down, and paint it in whatever color you like. I chose blue and it took two full coats to get it the dark color that I wanted. This is the finished product of my color. You can add whatever pattern or design you like to make your stingray look cute and colorful for you. I chose to add polka dots in the pinkish purple to make my stingray colorful and fun. This is how my stingray turned out after I added the polka dots. Next, you're going to take the googly eyes in your packet and put them close together on the front, making sure they are securely fastened. Curl up the edges of your stingray. When stingrays swim, they wiggle the sides of their bodies to move. Using the enclosed cardstock, cut a narrow triangle and fasten it to the back of your stingray using tape, glue, or staples or brads. I drew a smiley face on mine. Isn't he a happy stingray? Don't forget to practice the memory verse. Neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 39. Refuge kids and digging kids, I love you guys. I miss you a ton, and I can't wait for us to start meeting again. Make sure that you like and subscribe and trigger the bell on these videos so that you can keep watching them and get a message from me every time. I am going to be sending those craft packets to you every single week now. So be looking for the next one in the mail. We're going to be talking about whales. We're, keep, we're going to still do under the sea and it's going to be awesome. Check it out. I love you. I miss you. And I'll see you soon. Bye guys.